Nine years ago, Richard Corbett fell 50 feet, and this resulted in significant injuries, including a spinal cord injury. Richard Corbett began a long road of adapting, and the road has led to Richard Corbett launching a platform called Wheels to Walking. Richard is making profound impacts within his community and the adaptive world. Richard is especially impacting those that have gone through a significant injury and need to adapt to a new normal, as he calls it. So tune in to hear Richard Corbett's story, his insight, and learn about Wheels to Walking and what it can do for you. Through that tragedy, taught me life is finite. You really have a short window to like take what it is that from life that you want and enjoy it. He can go back to that day, February 18, 1990, and change what happened. My my honest answer is I, I wouldn't change it. You're just going to have to go through it, and your strength is going to be found in simply going through it and being authentic and real in the process. I was talking with my family, the care doctor today, and she, she turned around to me and she looked at me and she was like, do you think that you'll eventually be beat this? And I was sort of like, yeah, that's probably what I'm trying to do. No, nothing will ever take away the pain of my daughter not being here. It's my reality. Well, I know what my body's going to do to me. I've got a wheelchair in my future. But you know what I've been looking for? What's that? One with off-road wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Just remembering me as I am, happy and energetic and full of life no matter what. You can expect a life kick you in the teeth, but you always get back up, no matter what, and you just keep going. Living Adaptive with Scott Davidson. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back. As always, we're going to jump right into the interview, but before we do that, will you get a chance? Head over to livingadaptive.com. Check out the content such as previous episodes, show notes, writings, contacts for guests, and a bunch of other good stuff. So go there. All right, let's get to this. Let's welcome our guest on today. Today, we have Richard Corbett. Richard, thanks for coming on, man. Really appreciate it. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. I've been watching your videos quite a bit. I was watching your videos last night, and I'm thinking, you're in like Target. You're in a bunch of different areas. You're doing it very public. A lot of people are watching. What's like the craziest comment you get while you're filming? Uh, most of the time, people don't even come up and, and comment while I'm filming. Uh, they'll just stand really close to me and pretend to look around at something else and just like listen to what I'm doing. Uh, there's a lot of curiosity to try to figure out what I'm doing, uh, especially in uh, the scene um, with my, my video that I, I released called uh, Why Do I Use a Wheelchair If I Can Walk? There's a scene where, where me and uh, the guy who helps me produce my videos are sitting on a bench and we're just trash talking me. Um, and pointing and laughing. And a lot of people were really confused as to why we were filming ourselves making fun of an invisible person. <laughs> yeah, that's a good video, man. You have great content. Um, that's what we're going to jump into next is you have really good content. Your producer is great at what he does. You're good at what you do. Your personality I haven't seen on this scene um, since I've started this podcast a couple years ago. Um, you're, you're really well in terms of like your not just on video, you're in audio, you're uh, posting all over the place. And I just think your content's top notch. You're creating content for a purpose though. And that purpose is you have your project, your world, your arena and your tribe. And it's called Wheels to Walking, man. Can you tell us why you got into that? So Wheels to Walking for me was a response to um, something I needed when I first got hurt. So when I first got hurt, um, I didn't know what my future looked like. There was a lot of uncertainty. There was a a lot of fear. There was a lot of um, just being unsure of what was going on. And I remember uh, like frantically searching the web for uh, wheelchair pictures and wheelchair videos and just trying to see what my life would have looked like or what my life could look like. And I, I didn't find anything. I was lucky enough to early on kind of find some adaptive sports and um, find some other guys in chairs that were willing to like let me hang out with them and I could learn, you know, how to live my new normal and kind of mm -hmm. live my life in a way that um, the chair didn't get in the way. Um, I, I then many, many years down the road after uh, quite a few trials and tribulations was kind of bored creatively and I started to kind of document my life a little bit. Every time I did something in my chair that uh, was different than what how I did it when I was an able-bodied, I would record it and make a video out of it. And I got just some incredible responses, not just from um, people on wheels, but also, um, regular able body too. And I thought mm -hmm. that was pretty cool. So after a few videos, the response just kept getting crazier and crazier. And I was like, okay, I actually have to buckle down and do this real do a proper, proper launch. So I kind of went, um, went dark for a good six months 
and built up all the back end and recorded a bunch of videos and got a bunch of content ready ready and f- photos taken and um have just gone ahead and launched it out ready for everyone to see and I'm really excited to share it with everyone. You have a really cool statement you said there, and I'm going to dive back into the what you're doing in the future of it, but you had a really cool statement that said, my new normal. What does that mean to you? Uh, well, for me personally, the idea of new normal is, I think the idea of normal is like so silly anyway, like what is normal, whether yeah, yeah. you're able-bodied or in a chair. Um, but I know my daily activities changed when um, I got hurt, which meant there was a lot of self-care involved. There was a lot of things like doctor's appointments. There was a lot of just extra that I had to start to do. And I felt like it had consumed my life for a while um, because I think that's pretty normal because you're not used to having to take so much care of yourself. For sure, yeah. And and then after a while, it got to the point where a lot of those extra things just kind of faded into the background. I didn't notice them anymore. They were just simply what I did. They were my normal. So the idea of new normal is just a, a, I guess, a language way to to communicate with newly injured guys. That's like your normal is different now. So you have to find your new normal. You can't, you can't go back to the way you were. Um, That's just not how this, these type of injuries are, but you can find a new way to live that is um, just as good, if not better than how you were living. To get to know you, Richard, um, what was your injury? Like um, where, where's it at? So I have a L2 incomplete spinal cord injury that I got from a fall. That's pretty low down. And it's, uh, that that's a crazy thing. I I read like it was like 50 feet, man. That's freaking nuts, man. Um, Yeah. It was a a wild situation. It was, it was onto concrete. Um, and luckily, um, I had had some previous, uh, gymnastics training. So I knew how to balance and position myself, um, in air in order to land on my feet. Uh, Another lucky thing I had is um, at the time I was training for a bodybuilding competition, so I was extremely strong. Um, So I landed on my feet, and um, because of my strength, um, in my muscles at least, um, both my uh, legs broke down by the ankle, um, which caused my my butt to hit the ground. When my my butt hit the ground, the um, force of impact uh, shot through my spine, blowing out quite a few vertebrae along the way. But the one that hit my spinal cord was the L2 vertebrae. And I think that was because it was the closest to to the original force of impact, which was my legs and my butt. Um, My left elbow um, also got shattered into about 50 different pieces. Uh, The doctors described it as powdered. And they even brought in uh, students from the university to do a case study on it because it was the biggest fracture they'd seen on a living body before that they were, they were really excited because they got to operate on a huge fracture that on a living body. They did not uh, tell you they were excited. Did they say those words, man? Well, when I was in the recovery situation and it was a couple of weeks later, some of the students came in and they're like, we were so excited to, you know, work on you. <laughs> yeah. It was something we had haven't, never had to experience before. And it was Jeez. so exciting. Like they, they were excited about it for their own reasons. I don't think it was necessarily the right time for them to say they were excited about it, but they were, they were super stoked. And, um, uh, I'm also lucky I didn't get a brain injury either because my the the force of impact. Um, I use the analogy: if you take a pole and you hit it on the ground, it reverberates through the pole and eventually it has to leave out the top. Well, I was leaned fine, like when the force of impact left my spine, I was leaning back, and um, the force of impact shot out my sternum, um, which split my sternum in half and ripped both my pecs off the bone, as opposed to it shooting through my skull and splitting my brain in half. So um, there's many reasons as to why i should be dead and i'm definitely not and i'm so lucky that i have no i had no internal injuries i had no brain injuries all the injuries i had were um, orthopedic um, which just means bone or they were um, the actual spinal cord damage itself how long were you in the hospital well the first hospital i was at i want to say a month Uh i don't even remember how many surgeries i had because they kept me under anesthesia because i had such a strong heart Instead of waking me up in between every surgery, they just kept me under and just kept giving me surgeries um, to put me back together. I want to say I was there for like a month. Uh, and then I was tr- transitioned into like a rehabilitation facility. And I couldn't do too much there because I wasn't allowed to like weight bear on my feet or my arm at all. Uh, but there they taught me about things like uh, bowel program and cathing and um, weight shifts and um, – 
you know, wound care and other stuff like that. So I could then go home and heal for um, three or four months until I could get um, back to actually do some of the physical therapy and occupational therapy and stuff like that. What's so refreshing about you is that you're really real of it. Really real. That sounds stupid, but you are, you're real and you're very out there. I remember first encountering a video. One was why, why do I use a chair? And then second, I read this nine years ago, I fell 50 feet. My life changed forever. I had to learn how to live again with a wheelchair. I've stumbled many times along the way, addiction, depression, homelessness, attempts at suicide. Life hasn't been easy, but I've managed to adapt and overcome every time. It's a goddamn profound statement, man. And, um, you're, you, that's the content you're putting out there. Do you feel comfortable getting so real like that and just, uh, kind of opening yourself up? I mean, it's probably the most uncomfortable I've ever felt in my entire life. Yeah. Um, I tried to hide from that and tried to pretend like it didn't exist for so long. I, until I want to say summer 2017, um, I didn't even, I had no social media presence. Um, I was afraid of cameras. I was afraid of mirrors. I didn't want anyone to know my secrets. Um, I just wanted to try to live a, a, a normal – again, there's that word again um, – quote, unquote, normal life. I just wanted to blend back into the society. I just – I didn't want to be seen. Um, and it's it's interesting because now I'm I'm literally – uh, showing my ass to the world. Yeah, you are, man. <laughs> you know, if you, yeah, if you look sure. at, in one of my videos, I talk about like the functions of my body and like what works and what doesn't work. And I'm literally showing my butt. So um, it's a beautiful thing, man, to get out there like that. Yeah. I just decided, man, I realized that I was doing a disservice by not sharing my story um, because I felt like I had a lot to say, but I didn't feel like I had anywhere to say it. And I felt so trapped and so misunderstood um, because I had a, I've experienced a lot in my life, man. It's just like a lot of horrible things that a lot of people shouldn't have to deal with, but I did and I have, and, um, I just think it's one of those things that I'm like, I went through a living hell and now how I have found a way to make it worth it is by sharing all of my failures with everybody else. So hopefully they do not go down the path I went or if they are headed down that path, they know that they can turn around along the way. And and a part of the story that I tell is is a lot of there's a lot of resources along the way. I, I I tell a story, I say, hey, this is something that I went through, this is something that happened. And I always end it with hope and I always end it with resources because I want to eliminate and reduce the pain that I went through because what I went through, I would never wish up on my worst enemies. And, and if I can relieve that pain for somebody else by telling it, then, then it makes it worth it. You're a badass man right there. Uh, what you said, we can all go through some stuff, but once you start to create ways out of it or create ways to get better with it, coping with it, adapting to it, you're a content creator in a way that, you know, others aren't doing. And that's, a, that's impressive, man. Um, getting through this like wheels to walking when we go to your site when we go to your social media accounts what can you, what can we expect man well you're just gonna get like the raw side of things i mean I, I talk about everything and anything there's nothing off off limits um i value authenticity over everything and as much um like candor as i possibly can mm -hmm. Like I will not sugarcoat anything. I'm going to tell you how it is, but I'm also going to give you some hope at the end. You know, I, I talk a lot about wanting to share my experience, strength, and hope. And it's like the experiences that I've went through, the strength that I've gained, the strength that you can gain, and the hope for the future that I have for myself and the hope that you can have too. And I do that many ways. You know, I have my untold story, which is a series of emails that you can sign up to, which is like the deepest, darkest past, you know, where I talk. Um, about, you know, the depression, the addiction, mm -hmm. the attempts at suicide, how I got hurt. Like I talk, I talk about those things. Like you even get to read one of my suicide notes in those letters. Like it's, it's not for the lighthearted. I, I've even disclaimered it on the top of every video. Like if you can't handle this stuff, don't read it. But I don't think that's appropriate for like a video. So I keep my videos more upbeat and more happy and more entertaining and more hopeful um, because I believe people that are watching these videos need to be inspired and and need to see that they can do 
what I'm doing. And and that's a big thing is like, it's, it's not just educational and entertaining. It's also empowering. So someone else is in a chair is watching this at home. They get a laugh, they get inspired, but then also they feel like they can go out and do it themselves too. And, and that's what you're going to get out of that. And if you're following my, my image posts and my, um, my Instagram where in the captions, I talk, um, kind of like blog style, I guess, yep. where I just, I just tell a story and it, and it always ends with hope. I, I talk about something I, I've dealt with or something I deal with, or maybe even something I'm dealing with at that moment or whatever's on my mind. And I make sure I, I put some hope on the end of it because that's what we all need is some hope at the end of the day. So there, there's levels to it. You know, if the more fun stuff is going to be the videos, a little more serious stuff is going to be the pictures and the captions. And then like the real, real deep stuff is going to be um, what you'll find uh, in my untold story. And then I also have some fun stuff too, like a behind the scenes podcast that's on my Patreon where uh, me and my producer, Andrew, just sit, just sit and talk and shoot the shit about um, everything we're doing behind the scenes. Yeah. Will the podcast be something that um, Patreon supporters can get? That's, that's who's going to be able to get the uh, podcast. Yeah, so currently at the moment, the po- behind the scenes podcast is under the behind the scenes tier on my Patreon. Cool. Um, to be a part of the behind the scenes tier, you get the behind the scenes podcast, you get early access to the videos, and um, you also get access to uh, polls where we vote on future video topics. Yeah, let's get to those videos, man. Let's go back to that a little bit. You, um, you, you provide tutorials of how to get around, not just around, but how to navigate things, how to communicate with people and how to accept what's going on around you in the surroundings, people looking, whatever you speak a little bit about that. Um, how often are you releasing content? So videos are once a week and, um, photos with captions are currently twice a week. Let's go back to this. You talk about getting comfortable with looking in a mirror, something I can relate to, man. I skip a lot of leg days. I've always have, you know, <laughs> and so like, uh, how, how did you get to a place where you don't even have to, for me, it didn't even have to be comfortable. I still don't like it, but I still, but I do it. How'd you get to that place, man? So it's, it's, it's kind of interesting in the beginning. I couldn't even look in a mirror. I couldn't see myself in a reflection without getting angry, upset, nauseous and frustrated. Like I was just so mad. And I think that has to do with the fact that I was also into bodybuilding, which is a very aesthetic visual like body dysmorphic type of type of vein sport where all you're doing is looking at yourself and looking at your competition and trying to look better and then i have this injury where i lose almost all my muscle mass um and i'm in a wheelchair and my legs are all skinny and i just i just hated it right the the thing that got me less afraid of the camera was making workout montages that i could put on my instagram to make me look really badass. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I found a way that was some of my fir- very first videos, even before I started putting videos on on the Wheels to Walking YouTube page, was I got a camera and I used to tape my tape. Listen to me, I'm aging myself. <laughs> I used to I used to record my workouts and then I would edit them together with some really cool music and make myself look awesome and. And I got a great response from the people that were watching them online. And I was like, hey, look at this. And then I realized that the, I could use the chair to my advantage. Like I even find still today that if my wheelchair is in a photo on Instagram, it gets almost four times as much engagement as a picture of me without my wheelchair in it. So I've kind of embraced the trope because that's the audience I'm trying to capture anyway. So why not just go ahead and and play it out as much as I possibly can. And, and even getting comfortable making videos and showing my, you know, little skinny legs and and showing the fact that I I walk weird and, um, you know, just kind of getting comfortable behind a camera and learning how to pose. And it, it's one of these things where, again, like I said before, like it was the most uncomfortable thing I've ever done but I know how much it's going to mean to someone. So like, forget me. It's not about me at this point anymore. It's about adding value to other people's lives. And if I got to be uncomfortable with that, then okay, that's fine. Now you talked about bodybuilding. You talked about being involved in a bunch of sports. When did you know you could hop back in? 
that first of all took me to stop saying I can't. That was the, that was the biggest thing. I, I found myself in a situation where I was, I was two years clean. Um, I was fat. Um, I had my own place, uh, but I was just really miserable, even though everything was like back to where it was, um, or supposed to be quote unquote, supposed to be, there you go. That normal supposed to be. Yeah. 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 And, um, I was so afraid of the gym because I knew I could not perform the way I did previously. And I was really overweight too, you know? Um, so the elbow issue that I talked about has really limited my range of motion on that elbow, which means almost all lifts have to be adapted in some kind of way. You know, uh, although I can stand and walk, uh, I cannot stand and like hold weight at the same time. So all yeah. my, all my lifts still have to be adapted in a way where I sit on my butt, my back or my belly, uh, in some variation or machines are also really great too. I love, I love using, um, some of those machines Me too, man. And, uh, it took me getting out of my comfort zone and going into the gym at my apartment building and, uh, just screwing around. Just really trying to find out because like I, I had experience like I knew I needed to do push days. I knew I needed to do pull days. I knew I, I needed to work, you know, certain muscle groups and I knew how to do those as an able bodied person. But I didn't know how to do it as a, a person in a wheelchair and, or a person using a wheelchair. And uh, I just had to learn. And luckily I had a place where I could kind of do it early in the morning or late at night where I could just kind of um, just mess around and, and no one would look at me. And then once I got really good and really comfortable, I, I picked up a gym membership and started going into the gym and um, my whole world was open, opened up because there was more toys to play with and not just the typical stuff that was available at um, at my apartment gym. Yeah. And then I just started going for it, man. I just found a way. I was like, okay, I need to work out this muscle. How? Okay. Well, let me try this. Well, let me try this. Well, let me try that. Well, let me try this. And it was just mainly like – the whole workout is just me finding out what worked best for me. What would you say, Richard, if you could go back to yourself, man, fresh injury, and what would you say to yourself? Dude, I don't know. I think I might just say it like it's not over and it gets easier. I think it's one of those things it's like – but then again, I couldn't – I wouldn't listen to anybody. I don't think I would have listened to anybody. I don't know if I if – I, I would have even believed anybody. I was just so much in denial um, in the beginning, and I was so angry and so frustrated and so resentful and so mad at the world. Like I just was like, this isn't fair. Like no one deserves this. Like this sucks. Um, I don't know if I could have said anything, but what could have helped is if I had um, watched someone in a wheelchair do some really cool shit on on some videos. So, so that's kind of like the angle that I'm going for right now is like, I think f for the, the new person that's hurt, the, the person that they're going to listen to is someone who's been in their shoes and it, and that is living a lifestyle like authentically to be a power of example. Like I, I know like when I first got hurt, they were like, Hey, come out, check out this auditorium, come to the auditorium and like, listen to this guy, give you a motivational speech. And like, he's also in a wheelchair. And I got to tell you what, don't remember a single thing he said. <laughs> don't, I don't even know who he was. I don't think I was listening. Yeah, but, yeah. but if I would have found some type of video online that was like, hey, this is me going water skiing or this is me doing drag racing or this is me working out or this is me going skydiving or this is me shopping at the grocery store or this is me going to a concert and not only just showing me doing it but also like how to do it – Um. In a, in a way that's like, oh, oh, wait a minute. Like I can, I can do that. I didn't know I could do that. That's cool. I think, I think I'm not so mad anymore. I think I'm not so angry anymore. I think I'm not so resentful anymore because I don't know if I would have ever tried those things even as an able-bodied person. But now that I'm, you know, uh, got the spinal cord injury and I'm in the chair now, maybe I will try those things. What has it all taught you, man? Like this is nine years. We're nine years past injury, I believe. Yeah, nine years right now. What has this taught you about life, man? That you kind of have to create your own reality. You have to create your own happiness. You have to create your own purpose. You have to create what you want uh, because the world's not going to give you anything and it doesn't owe you anything. 
No one owes you anything. The world doesn't owe you anything. Chair or no chair, that, that, that's a reality for everyone's life. And um, that's that's the biggest thing I think I've learned is if you want something, you have to make it happen for yourself because no one's going to give it to you. How do you get the motivation to make it happen? I don't know, man. Um, I think you have to have a desire and then you have to have discipline. Um, you have to decide what you want and what you're willing to do to get it, but also what you're willing to give up in order to get it. You know, you have to um, take away short-term pleasures for long-term gain. I love sleeping in. I love sleeping in. Sleep If I could sleep in until 12 o'clock every day, I would, but I don't. I get up early, so I have, I have to give up sleeping in. You know, I love, uh, um, you know, going to as many events as I possibly can around town, whether it's an art event, whether it's a concert, whether it's a rooftop. Um, I, I love doing stuff all the time, but I kind of have to be like, okay, um, do I want to have, you know, fun or do I want to achieve my goals? You know, do I, what do I want to do? And I think it's, it's all about this constant and never ending improvement. And, and the question that I always ask myself is, will my future self be thankful for this? Will the version of me that exists in five years, 10 years, 20 years, be thankful for the actions I'm taking today, be thankful for what I'm doing today? And if the answer is yes, then I'm going to do it. Whether today me likes it or not, that doesn't matter. It's about future me because there's a lot of things I, I went through that I had to ask myself that question, like going to rehab to get clean off of the drugs. I didn't want to do that. I didn't mind being a drug addict. It was comfortable. It was predictable. I felt good all the time. You know, it wasn't, I mean, it was hell. It was horrible. It was the worst thing ever, but I didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. But making that decision to be like, okay, will my future self be thankful for this. So I just went through it and it was torture, but I made it through and I'm so glad I did because now today this version of me is very excited that the younger version of myself made that decision. Will you in the future talk about like you already talked about drug addiction. Will you talk about more in detail, maybe in video content, podcast content, writing content about how to get through addiction? Cause it definitely isn't an epidemic, especially after injury, man, there's a lot of pain and injury and it's legit. And, um, it can, it can dig a hole sometimes. Will you talk about that? So in my untold story, which is mm -hmm. um, the writings that I have in my emails, uh, I, I do talk about that in detail. And I also give free sources uh, along the way. And um, in the behind the scenes podcast that I have with Andrew, which can be found on our Patreon, uh, a lot of conversation um, about my addiction and how I made it through gets brought up as well. So there, there are already two places right now where I, I talk pretty openly about that. I'm not sure if for now at least – there's um, a video that is um, is there. However, I have made a video that is my my top uh, ten uh, tips to um, deal with your injury or how to get over your injury. And one of the tips that I have is uh, don't use drugs and alcohol. And then I kind of dive into it a little bit more. And then I recommend that people sign up for my untold story because I, I talk about it a lot in there as well. You talked about adaptive athletes and and so forth. What like, like you point to videos that are, are pretty badass and content that's great. What would you recommend to the listeners to go check out outside of Wheels to Walking, which they're going to check out? We'll have it in show notes. What else should they check out? I found the most awesome stuff to be found on Instagram. I love Instagram. Instagram's great. You can find hashtags that you like and you can explore hashtags. You can find people that you want to follow and follow them. Like there are adaptive sports that I discover every day on Instagram that I did not know existed. Uh, and it's thanks to Instagram, uh, whether it's the discover page, whether it's um, looking at hashtags like wheelchair, wheelchair life, uh, paraplegic, spinal cord injury, uh, wheelchair bodybuilding, wheelchair sports, adaptive lifting, you know, like you can look up hashtags and, and search through those hashtags and find people in wheelchairs doing some just cool stuff. Um, like here's an example of something I had no idea existed for people in chairs is this thing called, uh, kiteboarding where, um, able-bodied folks, they get on a, uh, basically a wakeboard that's attached to this giant parachute and then just surf over waves. Well, there's a couple of people I found on Instagram 
that um, do that in a seated position, and it looks so awesome, and I can't wait to try it one day. Like, it just looks amazing. I, I was over in Malibu, like, no, I'm not rich. I was driving through people listening. <laughs> not freaking rich at all. The point being is that I was in Malibu, and I and I got out of the car, and people were crushing it doing that and it was it was cool looking very rocky area though i'm like you're gonna get screwed up right there but yeah that's awesome i didn't know people were doing it yeah for sure man did you ever get in that realm did you ever get in a realm of like um uh getting crazy in the chair i haven't really yet but i definitely know i will like it's 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 for sure coming down because i i realized one of the one of the things i'm excited about with wheels to walking is not only uh making videos for you guys and and also uh learning and sharing really cool adaptive stuff is also getting to learn how to do stuff uh, that I haven't done before. Um, things that have always really intrigued me, like for example, the uh, the WCMX people, the guys that have like skateboard wheelchairs that go to skate parks. I've never done that before, uh, and I'm really looking forward to finding the opportunity to be able to do that with someone and make a video about it. I'm I'm really excited to uh, go skydiving. I know a few people that are in chairs that, that go skydiving and I can't wait to do a video with them, but I can barely sit on a swing without getting nauseous and having a panic attack. So like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm so afraid of that, <laughs> but like who, who knows what, what this world's going to bring. Yeah. I, mean, I hate to swing now too, man. That, that thing makes me sick too. I used to be able to fly on that thing. We're getting yeah, old, man. We're getting older. I, I, I now, yeah, I went to the park the other day with my girlfriend and there's a park that's near like a an airport like a little small airport where, where i'm from and um she was like hey let's go sit on the swings and i'm like okay and i got like two swings in and i was like uh-uh yeah, I'm I'm like, no no nope. and she was like oh and you want to go skydiving huh and i'm like shut up <laughs> yeah but like to get to know you a little bit more too you talked about going out with your girlfriend and stuff I, you go to like when you get out there like in one of your videos you're going to a comedy show stuff like that what's your choice of comedy man like my particular comics that I like. Yeah, who are you following right now? I mean, at the moment, I'm a huge fan of, of Chris D'Elia. I yeah, can't me get too, into man. I love, I love this podcast. I'm a true baby. Um, <laughs> I I went to see him a couple of times when I was in L.A. at the Comedy Store. Also, a big fan of like people like Theo Vaughn. I'm a big fan of people like people like Joe Rogan, um, Neil Brennan. You know, obviously OGs like Dave Chappelle. Like I I've loved comedy since. I used to sit in my friend's room and like listen to him on tape and CD. You know, we just sit quietly in a room and just listen to comics. And uh, those comedy is one of those things that like I love because I lost my ability to laugh pretty bad in my depression and my addiction. Uh, I just stopped laughing. And even when things were funny, I didn't know how to laugh. I had literally lost the ability to laugh. And that's sad. So now that I've been able to, you know, overcome my uh, addiction and and overcome and manage my depression, I try every second I get to laugh. Like the world is hilarious, and I just want to laugh and make fun of myself and make fun of situations and joke with friends. And so comedy is super important to me. And it's kind of the same thing with music. Like I I love music. I I go to concerts every chance I get. Yeah, for sure. Just because. For the longest time, I didn't think I could go to concerts. I thought those were just something people in wheelchairs couldn't do anymore. I don't know why I thought that. I guess I just put that in my mind. Yeah, we'll get the ukulele out and the drums out, and I'll just be doing that in the house with, you know, with my kid. And we're like, I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like a 14 year old or something right now. <laughs> but the yeah, comedy was a huge thing for me too. I could be delivered horrifying news and then i could go load theo vaughn talking about how his neighbor built his son a wooden shirt and you're like what the hell did he just say <laughs> exactly dude <laughs> yeah and you're like the the world's good man the world's good in some areas you know i want to hear about the wooden shirt instead of like delve into like the bad stuff it gets me through the dark moments i think that's so important to laugh and and have you know have that po that that experience so yeah, I had a feeling about you, man. We were talking earlier before we kicked off this interview. I think we like the same comedy too, same stuff like that. So, yeah, and I think also comedy is a cool way to um, diffuse or disinspel topics that are, you know, quote unquote, not supposed to be talked about. Yeah, and and I kind of take that angle a little bit with my video about, um, you know, why I use a wheelchair if I can walk. I I in the video use humor and make fun of myself throughout the whole video 
in order to lighten the subject. You know, something that is, you know, taboo and hushed secrets and, you know, shouldn't be talked about and it's kind of mysterious. I just was like, okay, let me just make this as hysterical as I possibly can because how can I kind of quote unquote, I guess, call out these people, but in a nice way and in a funny way while educating and entertaining them at the same time. Before we wrap up this interview, Richard Corbett, tell us first a takeaway, something that is interesting, something that's cool, something that the audience can just go do, you know, check out or something. It could be a book, a person, whatever. And second, tell us where we can hang out with you, man. We're going to put it in the links, but I want them to hear it over over audio too. What I could recommend is there's a an author, speaker, professor that I've really been getting a lot of value out of recently. Um, his audience is is mainly young men that are kind of um, a bit disenfranchised and a little upset with mm-hmm. their lives and how things are going. And he finds these really great and incredible ways to um, help you gain order in your life and to find purpose and meaning. And uh, his name is Jordan Peterson. He's mm-hmm. got a really great book called uh, 12 Rules for Life. And if you're not much of a reader, don't worry. You can listen to his podcasts. Um, or all, any of his lectures on his YouTube channel. I think that's something that I wish I would have found earlier. There's a lot about him that's kind of uh, been spoken about on the media that, in my personal opinion, has been taken completely out of context. And I know for me personally, when I first heard about Jordan Peterson, I was like, I hate that guy. He sucks. But then I realized that I was only hearing that information from other people and not directly from him. So I decided to actually explore into what he was saying because I think that's always important to go to the source. And and once I realized the message he was actually sending out, I was super confused as to why people were mad at him. I was just blown away. I'm like, he's just trying to help young men put their life back together. Like, what's what's wrong about this? I'm so confused. And um, so I've been really getting a lot of value listening to him. It's it's been great. I'm going to check them out. You're like the 50th person to tell me this. Seriously. Like, not really. Like five. And then Joe Rogan. But like, seriously. Of course. Yeah. Joe Rogan. That's another recommendation. If you need Joe Rogan. Yeah. It's a good one. Yeah, man. He's Um, awesome. uh, My producer, Andrew Deitch of the Andrew Deitch podcast has a boatload of really fun guests um, to listen to. That's kind of a a halfway plug right there. I definitely recommend going and listening to his library. He's got over 100 episodes and um yeah, I definitely recommend those too. Now, what about reaching you, man? Wheels to Walkings on Instagram, Wheels to Walkings on Facebook. You have your website, you have your Patreon group that goes in deeper. What do you say? Hit the link tree? Where, where should we hit you first? Yeah, so I'm on all platforms. You can find me in the comment section. I'm always in the comment section engaging with you guys. If I post something on Instagram, I'm definitely going to reply to you. No doubt about that. Same thing with on Facebook. If you're going to comment, I'm going to at at minimum uh, like or heart your your stuff and engage with you in the comment section. Same thing with YouTube. One of the things that I want is to be engaged with the community as much as possible, not just through my videos, but also in the comment section as well. And I hope that's scalable. It might not be. I might have to you know, only allow myself an hour or two to reply to comments in the future, depending on how big this blows up. But for now, I – want you to realize that like I'm not just some guy in a video. I'm actually a person too that's going to communicate with you. And and even if that's through direct message or or whatever, like no matter what way you connect with me, even if you find my email and send me an email, like I'm going to respond back. Awesome, man. Thanks, Richard Corbett, for coming on, man. We're going to point to you. I look forward to catching up with you in the future. I think the future is really bright for you, man. So I appreciate you coming on and sharing. Thanks, dude. I really appreciate you having me. This absolutely means the world to me. And um, I appreciate you uh, having this audience here right now listening to my story because that gives me the ability to to reach more people. And I'm just so honored that you took the time out of your day and you felt like you believed in my message and my story enough and, and or wanted to broadcast that to other people. And I'm just really thankful for you. And I appreciate you so much. For sure. Likewise, man. All right, that's the episode. Remember, you can find contact information for guests in the show notes or on our website, livingadaptive.com. On livingadaptive.com, you can also find previous episodes, writings, and a bunch of other good stuff. 
So go there. Peace.